was that no The leader of the ultra orthodox, right, Adelstein, passed away yesterday. It's yet to be determined who will succeed him. Um, one nice thing that I saw written about him was that I think from even a young age he was accustomed to giving a shir, a daily lecture, on the Talmud um, in Yeshiva's Panovich, the Yeshiva he was head of. Um, he even did this till basically the last day, even the day of his death. He was writing, uh, preparing the lecture he was going to say that day. Um, he even did it during Ben Azman, which is basically a vacation for people in Yeshiva. Nonetheless, he continued to say it on a daily basis, and he had to meet them students that came to hear it. Um, I think it's really impressive, um, me being part of the Daf Yomi, we learn a Daf every day. I think it's important to learn every day and to give a shear every day, which is exactly what I do. So kudos to Rabbi Adelson for doing that. Um, I think that is something that's lacking in the Orthodox world. When Ron DeSantis was asked whether if he became president, he would pardon Donald Trump if he's convicted of the crimes that he's being charged for right now, Ronald DeSantis basically said that he would. He would investigate it on a case-by-case -case basis, but he would be open to the idea. When they asked the question to Joe Biden, and Biden was told that Ron DeSantis, if he would become president, would pardon him, Biden laughed um, and basically said, you don't need to ask this question. Obviously, he was implying he would never pardon Donald Trump. It's really sad how the presidency of the United States, the most important position, the most powerful position in the world, has basically lost the respect of even presidents in the United States. They don't respect another president. Um, the fact that the most important person in the world is not respected, I think, is awful in my eyes. Bob Myers, a longtime general manager of the Warriors, stepped down yesterday. Um, he, his contract was expiring, but it was rumored that he would get a, con a contract extension. He helped basically build a dynasty in the 12 years that he was general manager. They won four championships, which is, you know, pretty much amazing um, in the NBA or any league for that matter. Um, I think the reason he stepped down, I think it was his own decision. Um, the Warriors dynasty is basically over. The best player, Steph Curry, is 35. Um, the other stars on their team are aging. Um, it's basically in rebuild mode, and in order for them to rebuild successfully, it could take five, six years, maybe ten years before they're can actually win another championship. Um, the daily grind in the NBA for players is arduous, and I'm sure it is for general managers also. So I think it's good for him that he's stepping down. NVIDIA stock yesterday topped $1 trillion in market capitalization after a recent boom where it's gone up almost $100 in the last week per share. It's around $400 a share right now, which is the highest it's ever been. Um, I think the best stocks on the market are these chip stocks, NVIDIA, AMD, um, because, because with the boom of artificial intelligence, the biggest companies which will benefit are not <coughs> companies like Microsoft or Google, which are incorporating artificial intelligence into their systems, but the actual power behind it, the chips are powering uh, the computers and all the search engines that are doing these things. So that's really what's behind it. Those stocks, I think, are the most volatile and will go up the most with artificial intelligence. But I still think the overall best stock is Tesla because Tesla is under the helm of Elon Musk, who owns various companies and is foremost in, in artificial intelligence. In preparation for his upcoming marriage to, I think her name is Lauren Sanchez, Jeff Bezos is expected to write a prenup prenuptial agreement basically protecting his $138 billion uh, net worth. Um, his last marriage ended up in a divorce where he had to pay out $38 billion to his ex-wife. Um, you know, it happens with all these rich people, celebrities, they get married, they're dating for a while, he was dating, he's dating for like four and a half years, they get married, it almost always ends in a divorce. Um, he's probably very smart if he signs a prenuptial agreement. Apparently his fiance also has substantial wealth, but not even close to the $138 billion, making him the third richest person in the world. I think a prenuptial agreement is a very, very smart move.